Hard to imagine that a man as uh, wicked and wayward as Nebuchadnezzar could actually come to faith in the monotheistic God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and actually give God praise in a way where it's immortalized in Scripture. You say, man, that's crazy. That will never happen. Well, it, it does happen. It does happen. And, you know, I just, I know that there are people in your life that you think they'll never they will never respond to the gospel. They will never say yes to Christ. They are so far gone. I want to remind you through the life of Nebuchadnezzar that no one is beyond God's reach and no one is beyond salvation. No one has, has a heart that's so hardened and so full of pride that it can't be melted by the Spirit of God. And Nebuchadnezzar's life should encourage you. And by the way, this is really the attitude that we always ought to have towards people. Not that they're an impossibility, but that with God, all things are possible. So I want to draw your attention today to uh, verse 34. And we're going to read two verses. Uh, I want to encourage you to open your Bibles up. The Bible says, And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored Him who lives forever. So check this out. This is the doxology. This is the praise. For His dominion is an everlasting dominion, and His kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to His will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, no one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? Like this is coming from the heart of the person who was responsible for wiping out the southern kingdom of Judah. And it comes after seven years. Remember, and you can check this out in verse 33, for seven years he has crawled on the ground like an animal. He has uh, eaten grass like a cow, or the Bible says like an oxen. There was something like feathers that grew on his skin and his nails were like bird claws. I don't know how low you had to go before you put your faith in God, but I'm telling you, man, that like literally is. My rock bottom was rock bottom. That's rock, rock bottom. That is like really low. And when he comes to his senses, you know, um, I'm reminded of the story of the prodigal son uh, because the Bible tells us that it was at the moment where he's sitting with the the pigs, the swine, and uh, in their slop. The Bible says he came to his senses. There was that moment of spiritual epiphany. Well, same thing for Nebuchadnezzar. He is awakened and he is restored and his heart sees things for what they really are. And he responds in worship. Now, let me just remind you, because we forget this sometimes, to come out of seven years of living like an animal and still have your kingdom. I mean, every day, for kings during this era, every day was, uh, if you survived, it was a miracle. Like they literally had people who would test their food because they were so often being uh, poisoned and undermined by those closest to them. So to have no control, to exert, to, to not be able to be in a, a position of power where you can manage people um, and identify your enemies and weed them out for seven years to come out of that and still have a kingdom. This was his lesson. This was what God was saying to him. Hey, this kingdom is the kingdom I have given to you. I have preserved it for seven years for you. And now I'm going to cause you to flourish again. And so the full circle for Nebuchadnezzar is this, that while he saw himself as the greatest of all kings, right, that image that was made of gold, he is the king and his kingdom is the only kingdom. He has now been humbled and he recognizes that there is a king that is far above him, whose dominion is above every dominion and who is able to do whatever he desires to do, that no one can withhold or restrain his hand. And I, look, let's, let's remember that today. Let's remember that today. We are living in a world right now where we are judging circumstances moment by moment. And sometimes, you know, we get our eyes off of the reality that God is the one who is in control. His dominion is above every other dominion. 
Sometimes we have the tendency to look to people in positions of power and authority. And if we're a victim, you know, we, we, we feel that they are the absolute power. And so maybe we attack, maybe we gather people to attack or to undermine. Maybe we're in a position where we're seeking to establish some earthly potentate to bring to pass the things that we desire to have happen. Maybe the person we wanted uh, was deposed. And so we think all hope is lost. For the Christian, remember, our hope is not in any person or any temporal power. Our hope is in the eternal God. And he sits on the throne and nothing restrains his hand from doing whatever he desires to do. This doxology of praise came from a man who had been completely and totally against God and who did not understand that heaven rules. How much more should this doxology come from our lips as we have experienced the cross of Christ, his resurrection, and we know how the story ends. Don't be glum, don't be all bummed out, don't be miserable and don't commiserate with others. Give God the praise that he deserves today. All these things are passing, but his kingdom remains forever. Father, thank you that that's true. We set our eyes on you today and we worship you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.